What was going on, y'all? Your boy Darius Gray here, back again for another video. This time we have ourselves Blue Beetle pitch meeting, man. Um, I can't wait for this because I love pitch meeting, man. The last one we did, I believe, was Secret Invasion, and that just it floored me with like all the little things that I didn't catch about that show. Um, yeah, man, love these pitch meetings. Um, I'm interested to see what he has to say about Blue Beetle because, like, Blue Beetle I thought was a pretty okay movie. It was like an it was like an average, you know, superhero movie. I didn't think it was anything special. Um, and from what I hear, box office wise, it is not doing good. Like, I don't even think it's crossed the hundred, you know, like million mark yet, which is insane. I'll have to check that out. But um, yeah, man. Um, before we get into this though, make sure you subscribe, like, all that stuff, all the YouTube algorithm things that you do. Do it, man. And then of course, support pitch meeting. Because they bring some uh, some great content, man. So without further ado, let's get into this Blue Beetle pitch meeting. Okay, so you have a new movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. See, I was thinking what DC really needs is a movie about a young guy who gets chosen by a super powerful being to have superpowers, and there's a big focus on family. Shazam. Yeah, I was just about to say. Twice. Well, this would be a different family, and they're Mexican. Oh, okay, that's probably different enough that it won't be affected by this whole superhero fatigue everybody's talking about. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that superhero fatigue is a myth. You're telling me people could get tired of seeing energy beams? Well, like, I have thoughts on that for later. I don't know. What if there's more to movie making than wisecracking characters shooting energy beams? You sound crazy. That did sound crazy. I don't know what the heck I was talking about just there. So anyway, the main character, Jaime, is coming back from college and he needs a job fast. Why doesn't he just ask his father for a million dollars? Well, see, that's the thing. His parents don't have any money either. I don't get it. Well, sir, some people need to work for stuff. Oh, okay, this is like a fictional thing. No, actually, this is real life. They're living in poverty. I've never heard that word, and let me tell you, I don't like it. Right, you might want to leave your rich person bubble from time to time. You mean yeah. like to Ibiza? Never mind. So this so guy pay gets your a job and your cleaning this rich lady, Victoria Cord's house, but this lady is the bad guy of the movie. She's super evil. Oh, she is, huh? What's her deal? Oh, let me tell you something about how evil this lady is. She's so evil. She's just evil. That's her, that's her that entire works. character. Great. And so she wants to use this blue scarab technology to build an army of super soldiers. I feel like I've seen this before. Oh, yeah, absolutely have, sir. And that's a feeling you're going to get in most scenes in this film. Oh, well, that's kind of comforting. It is, isn't it? Nice and cozy. So Victoria's niece, Jenny, finds out about the evil plan and decides to try and stop it. What does she do? She freaking sneaks into this secret lab in the cord building by stealing a scientist's key card. And she takes the blue beetle and puts it inside a big belly burger fast food. Food box. What the? Was that you on the box? What are you talking about? The big belly <laughs> burger box. Was that you on the packaging? What are you doing on the packaging? I didn't show you anything. Are you saying that when I said big belly burger, the image that popped into your head for the logo was me? Oh, yeah, I guess that must be what happened. What the hell, man? <laughs> Sorry, I feel like you'd be a good logo for the big belly burger. That's like funny. the exact same weight. Nah, 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 you've got 20 pounds on me at least. Why? That's pretty hurtful. Anyway, so what else happens? Well, okay, so then scientist guy goes back into his lab and he's like, oh no, the blue beetle is gone. Let's lock down the building. How'd mm -hmm. he get back inside the lab if she had his key card? Hey, shut up. And so Jenny gives this <laughs> food box to Jaime, who was in the building because she said she could get him a job. How's it a scarab's gonna turn him into blue beetle? It is. It's gonna go in his butt. Oh, uh, super butt bugs are tight. And choose him as a host and make him into a superhero. So why did this thing choose him as a host? Because. Great. So what yeah, they never he do explain now? It. Well, he can fly and he's bullet proof and most importantly the suit can create anything he can imagine oh, what kind of crazy stuff is he gonna imagine literally just blades and various energy blasters oh yeah okay so anyway now to try to get this blue beetle thing out of him they need this smart watch that's inside the cord building so they got to break in well that's gonna be hard to do i mean they must be on super high alert actually it's gonna be super easy yep. barely an inconvenience oh really yeah it turns out his uncle rudy had already built the exact kind of machine they need to break past security so they just use that it's well fantastic right? but then victoria's henchman carapax gets into a fight with blue beetle and he's got a freaking super suit as well uh -oh. and the blue beetle super suit wants to kill this guy but jaime's like no we're not kidding 
killers. Oh, very good. More than that Noble later. Noble moral code or whatever. Yeah, but then later the bad guys attack the whole family and his father's gonna die. So that's why he can't give his son a million dollars. What? Now I'm getting it. <laughs> no, you're not. This is just a very sad moment. And then Jaime's gonna get kidnapped because Victoria wants to steal the Blue Beetle technology. Oh, no. And so the rest of the family's gonna have to band together to go rescue him. How are they gonna do that? Well, turns out Jenny's father used to be Blue Beetle, so they used some of his old tech oh. to murder a bunch of henchmen. Oh, yeah, they God. murder yeah, all of them. It's a freaking slaughter, sir. They shoot people and impale them and stomp them. What about yep. that moral code thing? Oh, that doesn't apply to them. They seem to have a wonderful time taking lives. Well, you never ask them, them about guess. it. Yeah, it's good to have a good time. And so Carapax is going to end up also getting Blue Beetle power, so then there's going to be a big final fight. Uh oh. Yeah, so we're going to do this really neat thing where the good guy's fighting the bad guy, and the bad guy has similar powers, but he's a different color. And so this is like a CGI fight that happens. Oh. Oh, I feel so freaking cozy right now. Me too, sir. Classic so superhero origin movie stuff. going to realize that Victoria's stuff. not a nice lady, so he's going to drag her into some fire to be burned alive. Oh, my God. And so then everybody's happy, and Jenny becomes the head of the cord company, and now they're only going to do nice stuff. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what do you think? Oh, I mean, it's a superhero movie with an ever so slight twist. How can anyone resist? Okay, great. So you're really not worried about superhero fatigue then? You know what? Superhero fatigue, schmooper fero fatigue. What? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Ryan George yeah. here. Thank you so much for watching that pitch meeting. Uh, if you know me, you know I like to hide little Easter eggs in these things. So um, if, if you, in this one in particular, I did this thing where if you play it in reverse, all the audio will sound just nonsensical. It'll just be backwards. So you won't be able to understand. <laughs> Go follow him, man. Um, yeah, that was... <laughs> Much as is the case with Pitch Meeting, man, there's, there's no lies told. I didn't even think about the fact that she took the dude's key card and he got back into the lab anyway. That... That's funny. Um, and then the whole stuff with like, you know, yeah, it's it was a very classic superhero origin movie 101. We have the fight, you know, a villain who is very much like the hero. It's like a mirror match, you know, it's like Iron Man 1, you know, it's like uh, Shazam, right? Because like Savannah had like the seven deadly sins, you know, while Shazam had the power of the gods and all that stuff. Like it's, it's, a, very, it's a very common thing. Um, and sometimes that's not bad. Sometimes... It's not bad, but I think, you know, here in the year 2023, I think people are just over that type of stuff. You know, like, I, I put a pin in, in the whole, like, uh, superhero fatigue thing, right? Like, I don't think superhero fatigue exists. Cause, like, look at movies like, you know, The Batman, you know, look at uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, like, these movies that come out and people universally love them, right? But... And, and, and they make money, right? Um, but you get other movies that come out and like they, I think what the fatigue is, is movies that do the same thing as other movies where like, it's kind of like a copy and paste situation, right? Where like, it, where, where like they don't feel unique. They don't feel different, right? I think that's kind of the fatigue that people have. It's kind of like, when you see a trailer for a superhero movie, right, and it doesn't bring anything new to the table, it doesn't appear to bring anything new, that's that's where people are just like, yeah, I, I don't need to see that, you know? Like, that's why I think stuff like, you know, like a lot of DC's past movies have not been making, you know, their money. Even, like, for the MCU, a lot of them haven't been doing the amount of, uh, of box office numbers that they have in the past, because I think, you know, to a certain extent, the movie's coming out not that different from each other, you know? Like... Blue Beetle is definitely one where it is like, if you look at TV spot, a trailer, you're just like, okay, so it's just another superhero movie about family and stuff and a teenager who has these powers, don't know what to do with them. Cool. I've seen it before, you know, like, and like, that's not the fault of the movie. That's not the fault of the character. That's just what the character is. But I feel like if you're going to adapt these characters in the movies, you have to be conscious of that or like you have to be. Okay, this may be what certain character like this character may be very generic in what it in what the character is all about, but we have to bring some kind of twist to it. And if we not if we're not bringing a, a twist to it, chances are it's not really gonna make money. That's just 
I think that's the fatigue. It's mediocre superhero fatigue. It's, you know, average, you know, uh, it's like an average, um, you know, pull a name out of a hat. Oh, yep, this is the type of superhero movie we're going to get. That's what people are fatigued of, you know. That's just my, that's my theory anyway about that. Um, but yeah, man, Blue Beetle, all in all, I look forward to see what they do with him in the DCU. Um, I, I know in the movie he's like, how old is he? He's like 19, I think in the movie. So I don't know about Teen Titans, but maybe like a Young Justice or something, or maybe just a Titans, you know, where like, it's the kind of like the young adult Teen Titans do something like that with them, you know, let them, uh, let them meet you know, cyborgs and night wings and stuff like that. I think that'd be great. Um, I don't think he needs a sequel. I don't, even though like the ending, uh, teased it. I don't think he needs it. I don't think it would do money. <laughs> Cause like, I, let me, let me check right now while, while I'm right here, let me check blue beetles box office numbers, blue beetle box office. Um, okay. So right now it's at, 110 million that's it's or no it's wait a minute hold on wait a minute let me let me go to this box office mojo thing they usually have this oh god it's at 83 mil <laughs> 83 million 633 you know jesus okay but they're eyeing 110 million they think you know that they're gonna close off their run with 110 that is awful <laughs> That is, oh God, 